Okay, so that's what's called structure for motion. It's a very important fundamental algorithm in computer vision. And then the last step, uh, the last thing we're going to show everyone is basically putting all these pieces together. So what we see here, the, 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 the image on the left is the simulator image that we showed initially, the same environment. Um, what we showed earlier when we were showing the simulator was actually being driven by a human. They were driving around just using a keyboard. Um, now what we're doing is we're taking the images that we're generating by those five servers that Jensen talks about, sending them actually over a network to a client, which is doing the, the computer vision processing, analyzing the images, doing structure for motion, and then sending driving commands back to the server to find a path through this environment which finds a parking spot, a valid parking spot, and, and parks in it without colliding with any obstacles. The processing for reconstructing the 3D environment, the creating the point cloud, and the pathfinding is run on the car. Okay? The only thing that's being done in the server is the simulation and generating what is essentially virtual video input that comes into DrivePX. Exactly. So let's go ahead and uh, try to find a parking spot. So what you see on the on the right and the, the right side of the right are again those those images, and that's the only information that the pathfinding algorithms and the computer vision algorithms have about the about the world around them. So the, the server generates those, the simulator generates those, um, some reasoning is done on those images, 3D points are, are generated so we understand the structure of the environment around the car, and then we can determine where to go and where not to go based on that 3D structure. Now they tell me. I asked them why, why it's going so slow. They tell me that's five miles per hour. And, and it seems slower than five miles per hour, and they, they accuse me of never having experienced five miles per hour, which, which probably is true. Yeah, this is how you're supposed to drive. I'm not sure that I've ever experienced, yeah. Well, apparently that's the, that's the speed limit in our garage. So another visualization we have here, um, you can enable the obstacle map. It's something we call an obstacle map. This is um, showing basically Given the 3D points that we showed earlier from the point cloud, we can actually um, do some further reasoning about that, where we determine which of those points correspond with obstacles, things which are undrivable, and which ones are not, which ones are things like the floor, or the ceiling, or the parking garage, things which are not obstacles and so can be driven on. And so what we see here is, as the car navigates the space, the green line is the path that the car is following. The red points, um, you know, areas of more red density are areas with more obstacles in them, and so they're places that we cannot go. Um, and additionally, one visualization you're about to see now, because we found a parking spot here, you see there's an empty parking spot on the right, it's determined that it's a parking spot, because there's two sets of criteria that we need for determining if something is parkable. One is that it has no obstacles in it, and the second is that it is actually a parking spot, right? We don't want to park in the middle of the garage where there's no parking spot. And so a parking uh, command, a parking algorithm is executed, and we successfully park in the parking spot. 